Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Before I begin the argument of this presentation, I would like to apologize for the lack of visual imagery in part nine of this video series. I tried my best to preserve it, but unfortunately, I was compelled by YouTube's 10 minute limit to split a longer video into two parts, and the visual component of the second part was not preserved. Now, if you were annoyed by this, consider that you had just been deprived against your inclination of one of the five senses in viewing that presentation. Now, imagine if you had been deprived of not only all five of your senses, but also of the ability ever to regain them, and of the ability to experience anything internally, any kinds of thoughts, emotions, reflections. Well, if you were annoyed by not having the sense of sight in one particular medium, think about what the loss of all the other senses and experiences would be like. It is horrendous. So today I would like to talk about the very common phrase that is used, there is nothing certain in life except death and taxes. And I believe that this saying is quite representative of the resigned attitude that all too many individuals have toward their ultimate non-existence in this world. They believe that it is something unavoidable, something inescapable. And while other events might turn out differently from what they expected, this one is certain to occur. And it's interesting also that they adopt the same attitude toward taxation, which is the foundation for all of the other compulsions of government. Now, interestingly enough, it turns out that neither death nor taxes are as certain or as inescapable as many people make them out to be. For taxes, I encourage you to look at my essay on the system of investmentocracy. This is a concept that I developed, and it is a system which substitutes for taxation voluntary contributions to the government, and in exchange for these contributions, individuals receive votes in direct proportion to the amount of money they contributed. Now, I expect this to be a reliable system of funding the government without the need for taxation. But this is the subject of another video series. With regard to death, not only is death not inevitable, there are certain species of animals existing today that either can completely escape death or can at least come extremely close. There are many kinds of animals that exhibit what is called negligible senescence. They might age biologically at a very slight rate, but much slower than we humans do. And some of these are actually species of turtles. In fact, the painted turtle exhibits negligible senescence, as does Blanding's turtle and the eastern box turtle. There are a few other animals and plants that exhibit this property. For example, the roughy rockfish exhibits this property, or the rough eye rockfish, depending on how you prefer to pronounce this. Also the red sea urchin. Both of these can live over 200 years, and this has been observed. Moreover, the ocean quahog apparently can live up to 400 years. And to top it all off, 
certain plants also have negligible senescence. The most prominent example is the Great Basin Bristlecone Pine, which has been observed to live for 4,731 years. So these creatures have already in their organisms an ability to resist this kind of decay. And even if they do age biologically somewhat, it is at a much slower rate than we do. So we have something to learn about how these creatures manage to do that. And certainly, if these biological mechanisms already exist in nature, it should be possible eventually to adapt them to other organisms, namely ourselves. But it gets better. There is one animal that is functionally immortal. And this might surprise you, because it is not the typical candidate for functional immortality. As a matter of fact, if you saw it, you would either think it was very strange, you might be frightened out of your mind by this thing, or you might dismiss it as something too insignificant to merit your notice. It's about four to five millimeters in diameter, so it's barely visible. It's a jellyfish, or a hydrozoan, and its genus and species name is Turritopsis nutricula. These jellyfish have eight tentacles when they're young, and they develop 80 to 90 te tentacles as they reach maturity. Now, what's fascinating about these creatures, though, is no individual remains in an adult state once it has reached an adult state for the rest of its life. Rather, through a process called cell transdifferentiation, the Turritopsis nutricula once again reverts to a sexually immature condition. So it's the parallel of somebody growing up from a child to an adult and then having some process to turn him or her back into a child again, and then growing up again, becoming a child again, and doing this repeatedly. What's fascinating about this is, through this process, these tiny jellyfish are able to render their cells and their entire organisms younger. They essentially reset their biological clocks, and they can keep doing this indefinitely. It's a fascinating process, and scientists have much to learn from this creature and from the others which exhibit negligible senescence. But death and taxes are certainly not inevitable, and the moment we cease accepting them as inevitable, we can start to find feasible, real-world solutions, hopefully in our lifetimes, which is why I'm making this video series and I'm trying to convince you to change your outlook on this question if you haven't already, and if you have, to continue the good work. Thank you very much.